So this is the, the link layer. That's when the startup of the communication. So in the DMP3 world, we call it master slave. Okay, so all you can call it master station or our station. So the master station usually the one in control, the one in charge. So uh, when they start up, when the communication start up, when, the, when you turn on the machine, start communicating, they will establish communication with each other. You know? They will have a you know, handshake process to make sure that they can see each other. So that, that happened on link layer. And then the timestamp is actually put on the transport and application layer. So that's a timestamp for each message. You would also be you know, wondering, with the Modbus, Profitbus, DeviceNet, Ethernet IP has been really popularly used in industry as well. So if they don't have a timestamp on it, that would cause a lot of issues already. So why are they still being used? That is because all of this is still a master-slave protocol. When the slave throw the communication response or throw the packet back to the master, the master will put their own timestamp on the communication packet. Let's go back to the example that we had with uh, Oscar. When I asked ask Oscar his name, he responded to me with his name, and then I put my time stamp on his response because I know my time. Okay, so 99.9% of the time it works well because the distance is very short. But if say, Oscar, you live in Antarctica now, we still communicate, and there's latencies there in the communication. It could take about two seconds for me to hear responses after you speak out. So that two seconds would cause issue. When it comes to the real critical event and alarms, we want to know exactly when it happens. Yeah, we don't want to put a two seconds delays on it. So that's why with the DMP3 protocol, the DMP3 slaves or our station would put its own timestamp on the communication frame. That way the master knows, knows exactly when the alarms or events happens.